So, this is the update. After lots of, ow. My backyard ground is very uneven. Okay. Wow, this is, this is amazing. Oh my God, it's doing something. I don't know what the f went wrong. Boop, boop. Hi guys, my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. And not too long ago, we did a video where we tried out new DIY techniques that we haven't done much of or tried before or were familiar with at all. Just to like, you know, expand our skill set and learn new things um, and maybe teach you things that you have never thought of or tried before. So instead of telling you how to do it, we're going to go on the whole journey together because DIY, the alternate meaning of DIY is just big ass journey that you don't know how it's gonna turn out. <laughs> and at the end of the last video, we told you in the comments to tell us what techniques you wanted us to see try for a round two of this video. And today, we are here to try two of your suggestions. I'm gonna let Kelsey take it away, but I will see you after to try out some felting. <laughs> I'm going to tackle antiquing mirror. So for this DIY, I went to Home Depot, didn't film it because I was already sketched out enough to be at Home Depot. Our Home Depot's just reopened. So I picked up some supplies. I picked up some supplies from the office. Becky lent me, her, lent me. <laughs> she graciously donated her mirror that she took out of her bathroom makeover video. But I actually want some more mirror because every mirror is different that you're looking to antique. I wanna try a bunch of techniques out on a bunch of different mirrors so that we can really see what might work when looking to antique a mirror. And I wanted to try this because I am contemplating doing some mirror antiquing for my house. I might wanna use it in some decor, so I wanted to test them out and try some methods out. So come along with me. Let's get things ready. We're gonna go outside. Let's go acquire some mirrors. So I came back from grabbing some mirror and I'm just setting up everything in my backyard right now. And I'm gonna walk you guys through the steps. Now, I watched, you know, maybe a dozen or more blogs, YouTube videos, read things to come up with the method that I'm gonna do today. So, step one, we're gonna put down a drop cloth. Step two, we're gonna put down some plastic or like garbage bags because it's gonna get messy and we're gonna wanna bundle everything up in those garbage bags. And then I also have my mirror laid down, ready to go. Be careful when handling mirror, it's sharp. So now that our surface area is prepped and our mirrors are ready for antiquing, we need to make sure that we safety up. So from day to night, from COVID to chemical protection, we have our mask. How do you look cute in a mask? Awesome. Might as well do some gloves here because we got them. Especially because I don't have a band-aid so I look super sketchy. And of course I wear. Boop, boop. So we're going to begin with applying a paint stripper to the back of the mirror. So I'm following the directions and shaking well and then applying a generous amount to the back of my mirror. And I'm just using an old paintbrush to smooth it out and make sure that I have even coverage across the mirror, making sure that it's not too thin. We want a decent layer of this paint stripper on the back of the mirror. And I'm going to move on and do it to my smaller mirror as well. And when that's done, it says to wait about 15 minutes. I've heard anywhere from 15 to 40 minutes. So you have to follow your directions and we're gonna come back to it. But I have not been honest with you guys. I am not doing this entirely because I wanna antique a mirror. I'm doing this because I wanna figure out if I can actually do a smoky mirror effect. I am loving a smoked or a gold or a tinted mirror right now. I just think that they're very sexy. And if you don't need it for like a vanity, like makeup purposes, then I think it's amazing to have this kind of like tinted, darker mirror. So I actually, throughout this process, want to figure out if I can make one of these antiqued mirrors a dark, you know, tinted mirror. So because that is a goal of mine, I actually have a little piece of glass here that I I'm going to try a technique on. So I picked up a mirror effect spray. Now we've actually done mirror effect before in a silver on some glass. What I learned that time was that it took 
many coats and in the end it wasn't very clear which is good because I don't want this smoky mirror to be like crystal clear I like it when it's like dark and hazy and again sexy so I'm gonna take this piece of glass I'm gonna start spraying some layers of my gold mirror effect because I want it to be smoky gold not smoky silver and we're gonna see how that goes all right, so while those coats set on the glass, it's time to start stripping. I'm taking a plastic putty knife and wrapping it in a shop towel so that I don't scratch the mirror film. Then I'm gonna start scraping. The large oval mirror is working great, but the small dollar store mirror is being quite stubborn. I'm going to apply a little more paint stripper because the first attempt didn't get it all off. Meanwhile, I have about five coats of mirror effect gold on my glass, and I'm finishing it off with a solid black so that the mirror doesn't appear see-through. <laughs> This didn't work at all. At all. I don't know what the f went wrong, but this is not a gold mirror. That's just like reflecting glass. What the f I even, I made a mess of it. The back isn't even dry yet, but this is a fail. Big ass mother fail. I'm pissed. How, why, what? Well, at least we still got our mirrors to work on. So after lots of scrubbing, this mirror is a pain in the ass and I haven't been able to get it clean. So I'm gonna turn you into a disco ball, but maybe not. But I'm gonna give up on this one because it's just not worth my time. It took way too long to even get to this point. So guys, that's two fails. My glass failed and my mirror failed. My audio's failing right now because of construction. But the good news is, and the really, really, really exciting news is that the back of my round oval silver mirror. So what we ended up with is this smoky gold brown mirror, which is like what I wanted the entire time. The thing is there's some little bits that I wasn't able to get off and it does look a little tarnished almost, but let's continue on with the antiquing process. So if you guys haven't picked up by now, the anatomy of a mirror is that it goes glass, reflective mirror film and then a paint or like some kind of protectant on the back so we've already taken off the protectant this is a mirror film that can be easily scratched or it can be easily deteriorated to create an antique effect which is what we're going to do right now i read lots of tutorials and most of them used muriatic acid but we ain't about to get that messy and nasty right now i did see some tutorials that used bleach and I feel like that's way more accessible. So we're gonna use bleach. So I just put it into a spray bottle. But the first step is to make sure that the mirror is completely clean, just using some water and a clean rag. So let's talk about the bleaching process and what I learned. First of all, we wanna stick to the edges. Mirrors will naturally antique by the edges. So if you want to look natural, make sure you're focusing here. Mirrors are different. Each one is going to react differently. So my oval mirror took a while for the bleach to do its magic while for the small square mirror that I was just testing out on it happened way too quickly my goal was to have subtle spots in discoloration not full-on blobs where the mirror film deteriorated I used a hundred percent bleach for this entire process but if you want to start with a diluted bleach that might be a smart decision in case your mirror is something like the square one and the bleach will work quickly on the oval mirror, I left the first spray of bleach on for about less than a minute, and then I wiped it off. I didn't see much progress, so I repeated this, but I added more time. To stop the bleaching process, just wipe off the bleach with a dry cloth. I'm using shop towels here. You can try different techniques, such as like dabbing. I think it's good to try different things so that you get a variety of effects on your mirror, which again is gonna make it look natural. The longest I probably left the bleach was five minutes, but I kept checking on how it's looking between applications of bleach by turning the mirror over to see how the light shines through from the back. Only do this between applications. You don't want bleach on the back and then you flip it over. It'll get all drippy. When I was happy with the outcome, I gave it a good wipe with a dry cloth, and then I did some with water, and then again with a dry cloth. Okay, so now that we have done, honestly, the hard part, let's take a little look so you guys, oh my god. I almost dropped the mirror. Let's take a look so you guys know, understand what happened. 
So this is my little square mirror. This is what the back looks like. As you know, I only took off some of the paint, but you can actually still do the effect. You just don't get as much control. So where you can see my fingers is where the bleach took away the backing completely. So it's not as natural looking, but I'm still gonna paint, you know, the back a color so that we can we can see how it looks. Oh my god, I have to be so careful when holding this because I already cut myself. So this is my pride and joy. You can kind of see, right, where it's kind of more see-through because you can see me through it. So this is what it looks like up close. This is the back, but let me show you the front. You can see kind of like streaks, but overall I'm really happy with it. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to move on to the painting step. So on my little square mirror, I'm going to use a black color. There's actually this CB2 mirror that is antiqued with some black showing through. So just pretend in some other world, it looks like that and that's the inspiration. This whole square mirror was kind of a fail anyways. And on the back of the oval mirror, I'm going to use this gold spray paint. I was gonna use the gold mirror effect to kind of like bring back some of the mirror effect because I think I lost too much. But this gold actually has a shinier lid than the mirror effect, so maybe it'll be better, I don't know. And around the outsides, I'm going to do a rust color that shows through. So, in the end, this is how my pieces turned out. The little square one, again, just super tester. It was a throwaway. It would have made a better life as a disco ball. I'm just gonna keep shading it by saying that. But the oval one, I am pretty happy with. I think that that rust color underneath is the way to go if you want to look natural and authentically antiqued. But here are some things that I would have done differently if I were to do this again. I think that it's nice when maybe the center of the mirror doesn't get antiqued as much because you want to focus on the edges of the mirror. So I might, you know, even cut out something to cover the middle of the mirror in, you know, just a smaller oval shape so that it wouldn't get bleach on it. And then the other thing I would do is maybe like less wiping. I feel like the wiping actually kind of like took off some of the mirror backing. So just be very cautious of that. Maybe more dabbing, less wiping so that you don't see any wipe marks after the fact. And lastly, if you wanna make sure they don't get paint on the front of the mirror, you might wanna just do some uh, painter's tape around the edges because when you spray paint it on the back, it can seep under a little bit. But overall, a pretty easy and fun experiment. I have such a good idea for a DIY that I learned out of this technique. It's not gonna be antiquing a mirror, but I have an idea. Let me know if you guys wanna see a DIY that involves mirror and doing something really cool because it could be really exciting. Maybe for the new office. All right, so a bunch of you in the last video commented that you wanted to see us try out felting. I don't have any experience with this. All I know is that I gave Kelsey a DIY felting kit for Secret Santa last Christmas and she was hooked. She was raving about how fun it was and that I had to try it and like I had never really considered it but after hearing her review, I'm like, yeah, I gotta try that. It sounds pretty fun. So today I'm here with a ton of felting supplies and we're gonna try this thing. So prior to this, I did watch a couple videos just to sort of get an idea of what I was doing and how to do it and it seems almost too easy to be true. It just seems like <laughs> you stab the wool enough times and you make a shape. I feel like there's no way it's that simple, so let's just jump into it. One tip that I did pick up while watching a tutorial was that it's really helpful to have a drawing of the thing you wanna felt so you can compare how your piece is going to the model, so you're getting the scale right. And I never would've thought to do that, and after learning that, I feel like that's gonna be so helpful, so that's what I'm gonna do. Today, I am gonna try and felt Danny. You guys know I have the cutest border collie. I biased, I can say that he's the cutest dog. And he is a red and white coloring, which is like kind of rare for border collies, so it's really hard for me to find anything of a border collie in that color. So that just leads me to DIYing different things that look like my dog. Representation matters, guys. So step one is gonna be to take a paper. So step one is gonna be to take a paper and pencil and draw out the shape of my doggo to use as a model to reference when I'm felting. Danny! Can I paint you like one of the French dogs? Could you just like tilt your head to the side? Yeah, just like that. Can you just like chin up that way? Yeah. 
nailing it. Probably some of my best work. Can you like turn a little bit 90 degrees? Yeah, okay. Wow, this is, this is amazing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that'll work. Okay, I have my beautiful portrait of Danny here all drawn out and what I actually did was section off the different pieces by like drawing them as complete shapes because that's how I'm gonna wanna make the individual pieces. Like I'm gonna make four legs, I'm gonna make the body and make the head and then I think just join them all together at the end when I'm done. Hopefully. And another helpful tip I picked up is if you're trying to make something that has any specific shapes or bends in it, like legs, um, it's helpful to build like a base structure so that you can make it like very precise as opposed to like soft felt that might not bend the best. And the easiest way to do that is with pipe cleaners because they are metal, which means you can bend them pretty specifically, but they also have the fuzz on the outside which the felts can stick to. So you can almost think of it as like, it's a bit weird, but building the bones to Danny and then we'll give him some fluff after. So I'm gonna take the pipe cleaner and cut out, um, I guess, the bones. <laughs> That's so weird. So we're gonna do like each leg is gonna get one and then we probably don't need one for the body The legs are the biggest ones that you want to be able to give like very specific shape to so let's start with that Okay, so I have all the pieces cut out and bent to make the legs and the tail and we're good to start doing the thing. So the supplies for this is actually really simple. I mean, you can get fancy accessories, but on a base level, all you really need is this funky looking old man cane needle and a foam block as well as the felt, obviously, or the, is it wool? Do we use wool to do felting? I should know this. Needle felting, 100% wool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so basically it's just a needle that we're gonna stab the wool with to make it thick and in a shape. And it's got this little bend at the top. I think it's just so you can hold it better and not hurt yourself. And then the reason we have the block is so that it's something to poke the needle into so you don't wreck any surface you're working on and wreck the tip of the needle. So let's get started. Okay, I'm gonna start with his <laughs> front leg, this is so cute. And obviously the bulk of him is white, or we'll do the base out of white because I have the most white to use. And we'll come in with the orange at the end. Okay, white wool acquired. I don't know how much you need to start. I think the tip here is to start with less and build it up and just do like layers so you have control over where it's bulkier than others. So this is obviously very PC. I'm just gonna pull some out. Like this isn't very much at all. It's just like a tiny little wisp that I'm gonna start with. And what I think I'm gonna do is wrap it around the pipe cleaner and try and stab it in place. So we've got some wrapped around and then I'm gonna take it to the block. I think you just kind of like stab it with the needle. It sounds a bit gruesome. And also like, how does that do anything? But this is an extremely ASMR-y sound. Doing anything? Oh my God. It's doing something. Look. Look over there. It's now more conformed to the pipe cleaner than it was before. It's like stuck on there. Do you see that? Do you see that? So I think the idea is the more you poke it, the like denser it becomes. I guess the tighter the wool goes and you make like a more tight shape. Cause you know how like sometimes you see stuff that looks a little more fluffy and then there's some sort of like felting that looks very dense and like hard. I assume that the tougher looking stuff has just been poked more. <laughs> Not a sentence I ever thought I would say in my DIY career. The more you stab something, the tougher it gets. <laughs> Oof, I'm gonna get demonetized for this. Wow, do you hear this though? Okay, so we've got some at the top, and I think I'm just gonna wrap more and go down the rest of the leg and keep building it up. You actually don't need very much at all because already the little amount I used made the top of the leg pretty thick. That's almost too thick for the lower part of his leg. I guess you don't need very much. The pipe cleaner, which is nice, takes up a lot of the space already. You kind of just like pick up the, the wool and like tuck it in. Tuck her in, tuck her in, ready to go to bed, here we go. How does this even work? Why does this work? Good question. 
as you're dabbing it, it kind of like can get stuck in the foam block a little. So you need to pull it out and I think flip it every so often to make sure that you're getting like an even texture on both sides. And if you want to grab the starter felting supplies, I'll link them below for you. You can get a rainbow of colors and a bunch of needles for a pretty good price. Let's get a tiny bit more to do the foot. So I'm just kind of like pre-wrapping it in place. I feel like this is helpful to kind of get it started and then to make it stay, then you do the, the needle poking. <laughs> I don't know what it is, this is so satisfying. Okay, do you see? This is a little leg, this is his little foot. It's coming together nicely. Um, I do need to bulk up here because the top of his leg is quite thicker than the little foot at the bottom. So I'm gonna just wrap specifically more wool right up here to make that bigger. I'm not gonna touch the bottom because I don't want that to be any bigger than it already is. Okay, I'm gonna compare what I'm making to my drawing to make sure I'm on the right track and see if I need to make it bigger in some areas, smaller in some areas. So it's this little leg that I was doing here. Oh my, oh my God, it's so cute. I feel like we're gonna need a cute counter. I think I'm gonna say this a lot in this video. I'm a sucker for anything regarding my dog and DIY. So when you put those together, oh boy. Look how cute that is! Wow, oh wow. Okay, I'm gonna keep going and I think try and get the legs done and I will join you back when it's time to move on to the body. All right, you guys, I've got his little legs and his fluffy tail. Are we still saying can't even? Cause I can't even with how cute this is. I do think that it's really useful to have the drawing to kind of model stuff after. It helps to get it right. So I guess let's move on to the body. Okay, this next part I think is gonna be a little harder cause it's a much bigger piece. The legs went by so fast. Like I wanna say 10 minutes, even that feels like too much to get each leg done. It was so fast cause I already have the shape bent. I just had to wrap it and like, felt it. But this one, I don't even think, should I try and build the body out of pipe cleaner? I don't know if this is what you're supposed to do at all, but I feel like to bunch that much felt together is just like a waste of wool. Try something. I don't even know how I would go about doing this because it's like a 3D shape. Like, okay, let's see. Body is like this. I'm just gonna try and do the head in the same piece. So this is kind of like, the spine and then the little snout. And I think I'm gonna try and like wrap it with more pipe cleaner to bulk it up. Oh my God, this is like making the rib cage. Wow, I was never good at, um, it's called biology. Is that what it is? Yes, biology in high school. That day where you had to do the thing with the frog, the unmentionable frog day that everyone has to do in high school. I was out, I was like, I can't do this. I will come back when this is done. <laughs> If they had offered me the chance to assemble a frog out of pipe cleaner, then maybe I would have passed that class a little better. <laughs> you guys, I don't know if this is right at all. Is this how you do it? We're just making it up as we go. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Getting his little rib cage together. Do you see? <laughs> oh my God. The goods is back and then his big rib cage and then his little head <laughs> dead. Okay, let me build up the booty. This is so funny. Okay, this is actually looking like something. I see the vision, even if it's just in my head. Okay, so this is now what's gonna be the body. This is kind of like the butt, and then it goes into the chest, and then this is the little head I'm gonna build up. So I'm gonna start, I guess, now just wrapping the frame with more of the wool, and I think this will cut down on so much time. So yeah, I've basically been taking like thin pieces, wrapping it around, and like holding the end kind of in place while I like, poke it so that it permanently stays in place. I, mean, I have to say I'm surprised with how easy this is. Easy and fast. All right, you guys, check it. <laughs> oh my God, this is the cutest thing I've ever made, ever. Okay, we are getting somewhere and I am extremely excited with this little bean body that I've made for Dan. I think I'm gonna assemble the pieces next. I have all the legs and the tail and the little bod. So really it's that simple. It's just sticking the pieces on where they should go and like stabbing them into place. I've got the little picture here as like reference again, which will be super helpful. 
I should have made the tops of the legs like bulkier because I'm gonna take up some of the fluff to like help stick it to the other piece. So I might just have to come in after and like read add some bulk to the top because I'm gonna use it up right now, if that makes sense. All right, we got a little leg on. <laughs> this is the most precious, the freaking most precious. Let's do the next one. This is how it's looking. <laughs> Um, his tail is looking a little bit more like box-ish than I'd like, but I don't know. It is really that big in real life. So the last step is adding the color, which I think is really going to help it like feel like Danny and bring it to life. Okay, I have these three colors and I already feel like I know that this is the winner. It's like, well, on camera it looks more vibrant, but it's kind of like a, a rusty orangey red. So. I think what I'm gonna try and do, because I don't need to add any more like shape or bulk, like this is perfect the way it is, so I think I'm just gonna try and use like the littlest amount of wool possible just to coat the outside in certain areas where I want the color. I'm hoping that will work. I'm a little worried that when I go to push it in, it's just gonna like literally push the color in and then we'll lose it, but let's find out, shall we? Oh wow, this is so cute. Okay, so it looks like just doing the regular kind of poking is not making the color go away. It's actually doing a really good job of just covering it nicely. Yet another step in felting that has surprised me by being really easy. I am becoming a super quick convert to felting, TBH. You've got me, I'm sold, I'm hooked. This is everything I wanted and more. This is how it's looking. The color literally was a game changer for making it look convincing. Are you checking out your mini me? Are you checking out your mini me? But we're missing one final iconic piece of Dan, and that is his little forehead boop dot. You wanna show him? We call this his on off switch, even though he doesn't really have an off switch. She's always go, go, go. Let me see, Dan. Let me see. Let me see your forehead boop. <laughs> there we go. All right, we gotta add it to your mini me, and then I don't know if I want to do eyes or not. They're a very tricky thing where they can make it go real creepy real fast, or they can make it cute. I might just try it, and I can always take them off if I don't like it. The craziest thing is how little it takes to do something. So do you see how this is like basically just a piece of dust? You take it, and then you kind of roll it together. Itsy bitsy spider went up. And now all of a sudden, it's like enough just to make a little mark a little speck like i swear that's almost too much do you see this little dust speck this reminds me of like um the dr seuss horton here's a who like the original book like i they lived on like a little speck like this i swear okay here we go oh my god his nose though I almost forgot that. That's like, can't not do that. You can kind of not do eyes potentially, but you definitely can't not do a nose, right? Craziness. Okay. <laughs> There's his little forehead dot. <laughs> okay, let's do, let's do a nose. What color is your nose? Danny? Mm, it's like brown, dark brown. Thank you, you can go back to sleeping. <laughs> okay, I have this, which is like, almost like a, purpley brown or I have black black. Yeah, I think I want to do this because it's like still warm tone. Let's make a little nose. Here we go, little nose going on, Danny. <laughs> the tricky part is that the pipe cleaner is right there at the end too, so it's kind of getting in the way. Okay, we got a nose. Now the very last thing to do is eyes. Well, this is where it could all go wrong, but I don't think so. I just, you know what the hard part is gonna be? Is getting it small enough. Cause I tried to make that nose small. And if the eyes are that size, that is gonna be terrifying. I'm gonna have to make like the littlest nothing fluffs for eyes. Itsy bitsy spot. I'm gonna like roll together a little snake and then cut it with scissors. Okay. Danny, where are your eyes? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You have to get the proportions right with eyes because if they're like spaced weird, it just doesn't look right. <laughs> oh my God. That's pretty cute. I'm gonna do the other one off camera and then I'll show you our finished felted Dan in a sec. of your mini me what do you think of your mini me does it look like you 
All right, you guys, the sun is setting. Um, All right, the sun is setting and I have been working on this little Danny all day long and it's finally finished and it's probably the cutest thing I've ever made and ever will make. That's, that's just the tea. I have to say I had so much fun doing this video and exploring the wonderful world of felting. I have to say it was so much more fun and really easy. You really can't go wrong because everything is super fixable. So if you want to dip your toes into a new DIY technique, I highly, Highly suggest this one. It's super rewarding and I feel like almost anyone could do it. If you think about trying it out, let me know below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys wanna see more, please let me know any techniques below that you think I haven't tried yet that you'd like to see me try. Make sure that you subscribe and let us know in the comments below. I hope you're all staying sane and safe and healthy and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.